Roma Wines present Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you the Paramount star currently being seen in Miracle of Morgan's Creek, Mr. Eddie Bracken. Mr. Bracken appears tonight not as the exponent of comedy, as which he is so deservedly noted, but as a boy over whose head hung dark clouds of suspicion and who was involved in a particularly heartless crime. And so with The Visitor and with the performance of Eddie Bracken as a young man who called himself Bud Owen, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Well done. Uh, Bernie Cato, a crisp. Right on. It was around 2 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. I was right in my usual groove, counting them at Al's Coffee Pot, Route 22 out of Baltimore. Not a bad job for a green guy, 18 bucks a week and my meals. But I was aiming to be a short order cook when I really got the hang of things. Of course, I'd only been in the diner a couple of months. Well, as I say, it was the usual afternoon, not especially busy, but busy enough. No kidding, Mike. Where's that Westerman? Here you are. What do you have, mister? Ham on Ryan, a cup of coffee. Coming Bud. right up. Ham on Ryan, draw one. Look, uh, kid, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, what about? Have you got a minute? I guess so. Hey, yeah, I'll take the counter, will you? I'm going to have some coffee. Okay. So what's on your mind, mister? I'm looking for someone. Yeah? Your name wouldn't be Bud Owen, would it? They call me Bill Duncan around here. That's not what I asked. So? I'm looking for a boy named Bud Owen. Well, what about him? Disappeared from his home about three years ago. A boy from my town. He'd be about your age now, about 18? 17. That's it. Well, his folks have been worried sick about him. Everyone else gave him up for dead. Then I heard you were working here, Bud. Yeah? Who told you? No one told me. I got a note, anonymous. You didn't write it, did you? No, I didn't write it. You know, I think I'd have recognized you anyway. You're a lot taller, of course, and you look older. Yeah, well, anyone would, wouldn't they? <laughs> Same ears, though. <laughs> I call them wings. That's a good one. <laughs> know who I am, of course. Mac Burrow. Used to be chief of police. Oh, pleased to meet you again, Mr. Burrow. Well, well. Bud Owen. A lot of know-it-alls are sure going to be surprised. Surprised? At what? Why, to see you. Edgerton is certain to a man that you're feeding fishes off White's Pier. And when they see you... Boy, I can't wait. Look, Mr. Burrell, just what is your proposition? Why, Bud, I want you to come home again with me. Oh? Of course, things have changed some in three years, but not too much. If you take it easy, if you have a friend to help you over the rough spots, you'll feel right back at home in no time. I see. This way, you're depriving yourself of everything a boy could want. Good home, lovely parents... Yeah. Wealthy parents. You make it sound kind of nice at that, Mr. Burrow. And, Bud, did you know that your father has offered a $10,000 reward for anyone who finds you? No, no, I didn't know that. Don't you think you ought to come home, Bud? Maybe I should. And think of your folks. Think how your poor mother suffered. Yeah. Think how happy it'd make them. Well, Mr. Burl, if, if you really think it'll be all right... Why, sure it will. It may be a little tough at first, all the excitement, people staring at you, but that won't last long. You gotta expect some excitement. Oh, I suppose it was an event having a hometown boy drowned. Drowned, boy? They thought you were murdered. <laughs> And so began the series of events which were to bring a boy called Bud Owen back to Edgerton to take up a new life with the family which had believed him dead for three years. Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines present Eddie Bracken, whom you have heard in the prologue to The Visitor by Carl Randall and Leon Zugsmith. Tonight's tale of Suspense. (laughs) 
In this brief intermission in the play, let's imagine ourselves for a moment in a flower garlanded Bermuda, seated on the terrace of the exclusive Coral Beach and Tennis Club. At the next table, a party of Bermudians and Americans are taking turns, each paying compliments to the delights of the other's native land. An American has just praised the famed flowers of Bermuda. Then a Bermudian tops him with this. Among great American delights, he says, one of my favorites is right here on our table. It is this splendid wine we are all enjoying. Bermuda imports it from the justly renowned wine districts of California. It is your internationally esteemed Roma wine. Yes, and Americans themselves have certainly not overlooked the great and enjoyable qualities of these fine Roma wines. Proof is, Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. Such outstanding popularity must mean here are wines that are more taste-delighting, more satisfying in their richness and fine wine quality. Yet with all that as your reward for specifying Roma wines, you'll be amazed and delighted to hear your dealer say, Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. That's because here in America you pay no high import duty, or long voyage shipping charges for these fine Roma California wines. Don't fail to enjoy Roma wines. R-O-M-A, Roma, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage our star, Eddie Bracken, as Bud Owen, in The Visitor, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. After I talked to Mr. Burrell for an hour or so, the whole thing sounded pretty darn good. I quit my job at Al's Coffee Pot the next afternoon and met Mr. Burrell at the station. We took the five o'clock train for Edgerton. On the way, Mr. Burrell gave me the lowdown on what had been going on in the town for three years. How the town thought I was murdered and how my, uh, my mother and David Cunningham, my, my stepfather, just wouldn't give up hope that I was still alive. And he told me how my mother hadn't changed anything in my room. She was so sure I'd come back. Although she bought new stuff for the rest of the house, new rugs and a couch, things like that, Mr. Burrell described it so plain I could almost see it. Well, by the time we got to Adjutant, I was feeling pretty sad for my mother. And when I stood on the dark front porch with Mr. Burrell, it was a peach of a warm summer night. I, I thought if I could make her happy, even if it was tough on me, it was worth... Well, it was worth a try. Brace yourself, youngster. This is it. Yeah, sure. I, I'm okay, Mr. Burrow. Did you, Burrow? Yeah. And here's Bud. Hello. Bud. Hello, Father. Come in. Come in, Bud. Here, let me have your suitcase. Is your mother, Bud? Bud. Hello, Mother. Oh, I... Bud. Uh, this time it's really Bud, Judith. He's come back to oh, us. Oh, Bud. Bud. It's all right, Judith. Oh, my big baby. Why, you're so tall, I can hardly kiss you. Oh, well, now, come, Judith. Let's, uh, let's go into the living room. Come along, Burl. Oh, I always knew I'd be silly when you came back. Here, let me push your hair down. Oh, I... Now you look more like my bud. Gosh, I wouldn't have recognized this room. Is, isn't that couch new? Mm-hmm. And the rugs and drapes. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how we'll ever be able to thank you, Burl. Well, I see, and Judith's so happy as a uh, reward enough. <laughs> oh, yes, that reminds me. Drop into my office tomorrow, Burl, and I'll take care of that other, more tangible reward. Uh, Mother, I, uh, I don't know how to begin. I mean, I mean to tell you how sorry... Oh, don't tell me anything, darling. Nothing matters except that you're back. That's the spirit, Judith. Oh, your, your right hand, Bud, it's all bandaged. Oh, that's nothing. I, I burned it while working in the diner. It's nothing, Mother. Oh. Well, folks, it's been a long day for an old man. I guess I'll run along. Right away, Mr. Burrow? Why, you, you, you just got here. You'll be seeing plenty of me, Bud. Uh, right now, though, you should want to be getting acquainted with your folks again. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, Dave. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, oh. have you noticed, Judith, how deep Bud's voice is now? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was just a little pipe when he left. But it was beginning to break, wasn't it, Bud? Gosh, I guess so. It must have sounded pretty awful. And he <laughs> shaved, David. <laughs> Every day, Snooker. Well, gosh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> really, David, I don't think that's so funny. Well, oh. oh, that sounds like Ellen. Isn't that nice? Let her in, David. Yes. Uh, Ellen Woods? 
Why, who else, Bud? Uh, does she, uh, uh, live next door? Why, of course, Bud. The Woods have always lived there. Uh, hello, Ellen. Ellen, dear, we have such a surprise. Hey, Angel, so it's simply fabulous. Let me kiss you, you love. Hey, <laughs> ouch, take it easy. Well, Bud, you're gigantic, a regular beanpole. Oh, but I, I can't wait for Joe to see you. Joe? I called him as soon as I heard he's coming over here. It's all right, Mrs. Cunningham. Oh, of course, Ellen. I'd forgotten it'll mean so much to Joe. You know about Joe, Bud. Oh, oh yes. Mr. Burrow told me. I, 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 I didn't know before. Yes, this town's going to have a lot to make up to that young man. My folks wouldn't let me see Joe, Bud. Yeah? Well, naturally, they thought, after all, Joe was the last person who saw you, and then he... Well, he admitted you'd quarreled. But your mother and I never had a moment's doubt, Bud. I'm thankful for that. Oh, that's Joe now. Joe, it's true, Bud's here. Well, I went phone. I ran all the way. She said... You. Yeah, Joe, it's... It's me. Yeah. Guess it is. Well, pal, I, uh, I hear I owe you an apology or something. <laughs> Skip it, pal. Joe, we know how hard it's been for you. Only now it's over. Well, it didn't matter, Mrs. Cunningham. I've learned to put up with a lot. Yeah, well, <clears throat> Judith, dear, uh, let's go upstairs. Let's give the young folks a chance to be by themselves. Well, all right, David. But, but don't stay up too long, no. bud. You still need lots of sleep. Yeah, I won't, Mother. And, and don't forget to turn off the light. No. Good night, children. Good night, Miss Cunningham. Good night, Mr. Cunningham. Well, well, we do. Cut a rug at you the fat. Suit yourself. Joe, don't talk that way to Bud. You might remember he's my friend. He certainly was yours. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he was. Look, Joe, I can see how you saw it me, but don't take it out on Ellen. Kindly don't stop messing between Ellen and me. Joe, please. Okay. Do I have to make a speech? So you're home now, bud. I'm the last one to kick, but when you toss it all off by saying you owe me an apology or something, maybe it's not easy to remember we were friends. I, I didn't know what to say. I know I tried to remember we were friends, and the whole town was sure I killed you. I tried to remember it when... The, Draft board listed me as undesirable because they thought I was guilty. I even tried to remember we were friends when, for three years, people crossed the street so they wouldn't have to speak to me. People got up and walked out of the room when I came in and they... Gosh, Joe, I... I, I didn't realize that. I am sorry, Joe, honest. Um, now, now, listen, Joe. You should be the first one to walk around the town with Bud. Right tomorrow morning. And if you'd both like it, why, I'll go with you. Well... It's all right with Bud. Why oh, is it? Boy, I'm going to need company. Then it's a date. Okay, I... No kidding, Bud. I... I'm glad you're home, fella. No hot feelings? Oh, gosh, no, Joe. So long, Bud. Bye, Bud. So long. Bud? Yes, um, uh, Mother? Are you coming up to bed now, dear? Uh, why, yeah, I might just as well. You know, Bud, I've been thinking the funniest thing... What? Uh, uh, what what's that, Mother? Do you realize you never even asked about Trixie? Trixie? Oh, uh, that's right, I, I didn't. After all, she was your dog. Oh. <laughs> you know what they say about a boy and his dog. Poor thing, when you didn't come back, she just wandered off. Gee, that's tough, all right. And you didn't even ask about her. But I guess you can't be expected to remember everything. No, I... I, I guess I can't remember everything. <laughs> My mother kissed me goodnight. I went upstairs to my room, and it was just like Mr. Burrow told me it would be. Everything seemed to have gone all right so far. I undressed and turned out the lights, but before I got into bed, I... I locked the door just in case. Gosh, I guess I'm late for breakfast. But, uh, That's all right, darling. We know you needed to sleep. Sit right in your old place, bud. Yeah, uh, uh, sure. Well, your mother and I have been mooning over old pictures of you, son. <laughs> <laughs> bud, except for the ears and something around the eyes, you've changed so that I can hardly recognize you. <laughs> Look, here's the last picture before you went away. Why, it, it's almost frightening, the way you've grown. Well, Judith, dear, you wouldn't want the boy to be a midget, would you? Well, sure, he's taller, but look at the hair there and the way he stands. I sure was a goon, boy. You should have been glad to get rid of me. And look, Bud, <laughs> what else I found. All your school compositions from the first grade on. Here's one you wrote on Alexander the Great. Ouch, Mother, don't be careless with those things. 
I'll die a blessing. Why, Bud, I think this was very good for your oh. age. You were barely 14 when you wrote it. See, it's marked B, so it can't be so terrible. Well, your least little scribble is a great thing to your mother. Well, I'd better get off to the office. Drop in to see me if you have time, Bud. Why, sure, uh, Father, I'll do that. Bye, Judith, honey. I'll be home for dinner. Goodbye, David. Now, how about some hot coffee, Bud? Yes, thanks. There, Snooky. Bud, there's something important I want to discuss with you. It's about my will. Your... your will? Well, you know how your father, Will, David, was about my money, Bud. He never wanted to touch it or even to have me put him in my will. He's so proud about things like that, and I do have so much more than he ever will. Sure, I, uh, I remember. Uh, how much money is it anyway? Uh, uh... Well, you know, Bud, there's about $150,000 your grandfather left. Yeah. Then there are those four houses on Elm Street that Aunt Carolyn left and the income from them. I haven't used any of it, so it amounts to quite a lot by now. Gosh, yes, it must at that. Well, after you left, even though David didn't want me to, I changed the will, leaving everything to him. Why, sure, that sounds fine to me. But now that you're back, I think the best thing would be to just turn it all over to you uh... now. Set up a trust fund. You could use the income when you start to college, and later maybe you'll want to set yourself up in some kind of business. But, uh, and I know it will please David. But, Mother, gee whiz, it's, uh, it's swell of you, but don't you think you should wait? Wait? For what, darling? Well, uh, until you know me better. I what? mean, uh, gosh, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do with all that money, and uh, I might mess things up. <laughs> Silly, the bank takes care of everything. It always has for me. Now, all you have to do is sign these papers here. I sign them? I, I, uh, but I can't, Mother. You see my hand, the bandage. Oh, isn't that a shame? Yes, I, I forgot that you couldn't write. Yeah, well, it, well uh, it'll be all right in a couple of days, so I, I can take the bandage off then. Oh, somebody's whistling for you, Bud. My, that sounds like old times. It's Ellen and Joe. They're going to take me around and show me the town. Well, I guess I have to face the music. Oh, you know you love it. You're going to be a regular hero. Yeah, but I, I don't feel much like a hero now. Bud, Bud Owen, wait! Now you're in for it, Bud. Oh, Bud, you're really real and you've grown but divine. Hey, hey, you're choking me. Oh, I've just been telling everybody you're back. It's too sensational. It's like having a new boy in town, and do we need some? Gosh, I, I, I shouldn't think you'd have any trouble. Why, you're cuter than ever. Oh, listen to him. He's got a line. Gee, he sends me. Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> the best thing you ever called her before was buzzard egg. <laughs> well, gosh, I, I called her something beside that once in a while. Well, you did call her Mary Louise. Well, of course I called her that. Gee, it's, uh, it's swell to see you, Mary Louise. Well, well, Bud Owen, you bad boy. Are you going to recognize me or aren't you? Sure, gee, it's, it's good to see you. Uh, how, how are you anyway? Now, you're not too grown up to kiss old Mrs. Callahan the way you always did. Oh, uh, I'll say I'm not Mrs. Callahan here. Why? I heated enough bottles for you and washed enough of your diapers, too, so don't let me catch you putting on airs. <laughs> no, ma'am, I won't. Goodbye. Goodbye. What's the matter? Didn't you recognize her? Mrs. Callahan? Oh, of course I did. Why didn't you call her what you always used to? Couldn't you see she was sore? Well, I, uh, I did. Bud, you used to call her Aunt Seely. <laughs> couldn't believe it, but I daren't refute the evidence of my senses. It's the Owen boy, Bud Owen. Well, I'm glad to see you, sir. <laughs> I just saw your mother. I heard you were back. She told me she was bringing you down to my office in a day or two. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, she told me. Ah, uh, your mother's one in a million, young man. She thinks only of your welfare. I hope you've learned to appreciate her. Yes, sir, I have. Uh, well, I just want to check on the news. And no nonsense, my boy. You do as your mother says. What did he mean, no nonsense? Don't you know? Well, I, I guess so. Mother told me she uh, she was going to take me down to the lawyer's office this morning. Oh, and... Bud. I've been waiting for you to outsmart yourself, and this is it. I, uh, I don't get it. You sure don't, Bud. Give him a chance, Joe. Because it so happens that's not Mr. Reedy, the lawyer, but Dr. Sterling, the dentist. I talked fast, and Ellen took my side. And when we got Joe calmed down, 
I knew he was going to watch me like a hawk from then on. That afternoon, Ellen got the real snazzy idea of going to the beach. My father knocked off work and drove us down, sort of to celebrate my homecoming. It was really a hot day, so when we got there, the others made a beeline for the water, but I didn't because of my bandaged hand. I stayed around the beach club near the pool. When it began to get dark, we all dressed and went down to White's restaurant for seafood dinner. Then we walked out on the pier. The same pier where I was supposed to have been murdered. I remember I said something about taking the body back to where X marks the spot, (laughs) and everybody laughed. Isn't it heavenly out here? Oh, gee, this breeze is swell. Well, bud, looks like you and Joe are right back where you were three years ago. Yeah, I guess so, Father. Yeah, this railing is just where we stood, isn't it? When you and I had our fight? Yeah, uh, about. What's that phobia people have looking down from tall buildings? I get it looking down at the water from up here. Oh, you shouldn't worry, Ellen. You swim like a fish. Now, me, I I should really feel funny. About ready to go home, children? I don't want you to worry you. All right, Mr. Cunningham. It's been such a heavenly day. Bud, wait a minute. Come on, Joe. Wait, a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Wait a Joe, Ellen and Father. Only take a minute. First, about your not being able to swim. But, Joe, you knew about that. I never learned. That was why... Sure, you... everybody knew Bud Owen couldn't swim. That was why when you disappeared, they thought I'd pushed you off the pier and you drowned. Joe, I don't get it. Can't you let bygones be bygones? Bud Owen couldn't swim. But this afternoon, when you thought we were all at a good, safe distance, I walked up the beach club looking for you, and I saw you swimming in the pool. But... But I learned... And your bandage was off. Well, start talking. Or do I have to do the talking to the cops? Listen, Joe, you gotta wait. You gotta give me time. Now, don't get me wrong. No one in this town would be glad to have Bud Owen come back than me. After all, I've taken plenty because he disappeared, but rather than let Mrs. Cunningham be fooled... That's I... what I mean, Joe. You gotta give me time to square things. Just a little time. You better move fast, brother. Joe, no matter what you think, you know I... I haven't hurt anybody. No, not yet. And if you give me time, nobody will be hurt. <laughs> I went to Mr. Burrow the next morning and talked about everything, how people were beginning to make cracks about him and the $10,000 reward and the whole mess. I knew things were moving awfully fast, and I told Mr. Burrow he had to help me. That night when she'd finished her coffee, my mother said she was awfully tired, and my father, David, saw her upstairs to bed. I looked out the window, and I saw Mr. Burrow's car pull up to the curb in front of Ellen's house. I knew he was going to do everything he could, but by this time I... I was scared. Well, at bedtime, my stepfather fixed some sandwiches and we drank some milk. Then he came up to my room with me and we sat down to talk. Well, I see your mother's been changing your room around. It's not bad. I guess women like to fuss and around and so forth. That's a fact. And there's no use opposing them. I guess that's right. By the way, what's your real name? Bud Owen. You don't need to be afraid of me. I've protected you so far. Why have you? I asked you first. What's your real name? Bud Owen. You're stubborn, aren't you? You know, at first I thought you'd work this little scheme out all by yourself, or with Burl. But there's someone else involved, isn't there? Who do you think? What about that bandage? Well... Take it off. Well, well, well. Not even a scar. I don't suppose you'd mind writing with it now that it's healed. No, I I don't mind. What shall I write? Well, suppose we take this little composition of yours on Alexander the Great. Would you copy this sentence, uh, say, on the top of page three? Sure. Why not? Yes, and uh, to make it a fair comparison, write your name, Bud Owen. Bud Owen. Here you are. So she taught you Bud's handwriting, too. Who did? My wife. Do you think I didn't know what was going on? Every move she made gave her away. Why is she in such a rush to change her will? I don't know. Why? She thought she was being so smart trying to pass you off, trying to trap me. But I was one person who knew you weren't Bud. Yeah, but what makes you so sure I'm not Bud? I know. Isn't that enough? I see. I know. I see. Well, don't you think we'd uh, better get my, my mother in on this? Yes. Yes, I... I think perhaps we'd better. She's asleep. We'll have to wake her. Mother. Mother. Hey, she's... She's... Mother! Mother! (laughs) 
When I came to, I had an awful pain in the head. I was in my room in bed, and Ellen and Joe and Mr. Burrell were there. For a minute, I didn't know what had happened, and then I remembered. Mother. Where's my mother? She's all right, bud. She's in the hospital. He gave her enough of those sleeping pills to kill a horse, but she's all right now. How do you feel, bud? Oh, all right, I guess. Oh, it's a good thing you had us standing by tonight, son. Why, he had you trussed up like a turkey. He was going to hang you. Gee, Mr. Burrell, he must have been crazy. I guess he wanted to get us both out of the way before Mother could change that will. For crying out loud, bud, why didn't you let me in on this? I thought... Gee, I hated to do it, Joe, honest. But I had to. Someone had to be the guinea pig. It was my idea, Joe. I sent the note to Mr. Burrell. I really found Bud in that hash house. Yeah, but if you'd let me in on it, We I... knew if Bud could fool you. If you thought he was a phony, he could fool everybody, even David Cunningham. You see, Joe, for three years I suspected that guy. He pushed me off the pier that night, but I was only a kid. I knew it'd be just his word against mine, so I, I ran away. I kept putting off coming home, but I, I swore that someday I'd trap him, and tonight I did. Because he said he knew I wasn't Bud Owen, I knew that he thought he'd kill me. You took one whale of a chance tonight, bud. He'd framed you pretty. Another half hour and we'd have found your mother dead, you strung up in that suicide note you wrote propped up on the dresser. Yeah. A suicide note? Why, I just copied a sentence out of an old composition, something about uh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great? Listen to this. It is a terrible... It is terrible what awful crimes are done for greed and ambition. Signed, Bud Owen. Sure, you see? I was just writing... What? And I signed that? Holy! Well, that's about all. I didn't know how my mother would take it, having my stepfather turn out to be such a heel, but once she got over the dope he'd slept her, she was fine, as happy as a lock over me. Joe and Ellen, they got married but quick, and now Joe's in the Marines, and me... I'm just passing the time here in Edgerton till I'm 18 and my number comes up and then maybe I'll see a little excitement. And so closes The Visitor, starring Eddie Bracken, tonight's tale of Suspense. Suspense is produced by William Spear. Before Mr. Bracken returns to the microphone, here's a definition of yourself. Connoisseur, one competent to act as a critical judge of an art or in a matter of taste. That's what Webster says. So that makes you a wine connoisseur, because certainly you are competent to act as a critical judge of a wine's taste. Matter of fact, all you have to know to be a true wine connoisseur in the opinion of your friends and guests is a single word, Roma, R-O-M-A. To get the proof... Make your own taste test of the tangy, appetizing Roma Sherry, the hearty, satisfying Roma Burgundy, the heavier, sweeter Roma Port, or any of the many different delicious Roma California wines. If your favorite dealer is temporarily out of the kind of Roma wine you prefer, ask for it again, please. Just be sure to say R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Eddie Bracken, and this is one of those nights I'll certainly remember for a long time. I've always hoped, A, to be allowed to play a real, genuine, dramatic role, and B, it's been an ambition of mine to get a crack at this show's suspense because, well, I think it's tops. The next two broadcasts in this series should be particularly interesting. I know I won't miss either of them because Orson Welles is going to star in that very thrilling story, Donovan's Brain, which will be done in two parts, one part next Thursday and part two the following week. And uh, one more word, don't forget to buy some war bonds. Eddie Bracken will soon be seen in Paramount's Hail the Conquering Hero. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Orson Welles in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 